I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I'm glad you could join us this week. We've got some stuff to talk about. And I have my Kindle Fire here, which, by the way, as I booted the Kindle Fire to do this very netcast here on a Saturday morning, I believe uh, it is the 21st, as I look over at my PC and confirm that, yes, January the 21st. 2012, as I record this, I got an update on my Kindle Fire. That means a new version of the software, 6.2.2, is out. I haven't really done much with it yet because I just saw it update itself as I was booting, booting, as I sometimes call it for no apparent reason. At any rate, Let's look at some of the things that we're going to talk about this week, shall we? Before I do that, though, I want to mention we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Do you like the new uh, kind of logo thing there? Isn't that cute? <laughs> Always trying to take it up a notch. You know what I'm saying? Yes. All right, let's go into the blog, of course, which is D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C for Computer Curmudgeon. You could tell me that now as much as I say that. You probably go, yeah, yeah, I know, Dr. Bill, move on. Okay, Yeesh, getting surly this morning. At least it's morning for me. I don't know what it is where you are. It may be the middle of the night. You may be hunched over your tablet computer watching the Dr. Bill show off of iTunes for all I know with the covers over your head so your mommy won't tell you to go to bed. Know what I'm saying? If I was a kid that's what I'd be doing. Sorry mommies everywhere. Anyway. First item. Web users in China passed the five million Mark, now think about that. There's about 300 million people in the entire U.S. of A. Yes, and that's a lot of people. But there's 500 million people in China that use the interwebs. So that's cool. And a lot of them are using it on handheld devices, which is also cool. But at any rate, uh, people blog this is a quote from the article that I have a link to here. People logging in through mobile devices and those accessing the web, accessing the web in rural areas also increased compared with 2010 last year. More Chinese are using the internet than ever before, with more than 500 million users in China accessing the web, according to a report by the state-run China Internet Network Information Center. The China Internet Network Information Center. What? Anyway. The report said that the number of people using the web rose 12% in December to 513 million. So it's over 500 million. It's 513 million. Dude. The report also provides information on China's uptake of microblogging sites called Weibo sites. Isn't that cute? <laughs> that are akin to Twitter. You're no one if you're not on Twitter. By the way, that's my Twitter handle right there. Follow me. Follow me. That sounds so sad to think of people following me. Not really. I mean, you know, I'm talking more in the in the esoteric cult sense. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to following on Twitter. That's safe. You can do that. Okay. Besides, it might be fun. You might enjoy it. Actually, I know you will because I have quite a few pithy things to say. Don't say that too many times. You might, you might embarrass yourself. Whoa! Whoa, that's an early kick software the week drum roll, but it's a drum roll. So it must be a kick software of the week. And the kick software of the week this week is TNT Drive. Sounds explosive. 
<laughs> I'm sure it is. No, it's actually quite useful. See, <clears throat> here's the thing. I've been playing around with cloud computing opportunities, one of which is Amazon S3. Amazon S3 is a service that you can sign up for for free, free, and uh, you get five gig free that you can store stuff in the cloud, in Amazon's cloud. And then you can create what's called buckets, like a bucket list. I don't know, but they call them buckets. And you can put stuff in your buckets and then you can access them from anywhere uh, through the cloud. Fluff, <laughs> right? Okay, so, but here's the thing about that. See, I like Dropbox. Dropbox is another cloud service, and I use that all the time. Because the cool thing about Dropbox is when you install the Dropbox software, it sets up a local drive. It's actually a folder uh, under your My Documents or under, in Linux, under uh, my home directory. And so I have access to my Dropbox through, now get this, my Android tablets like my Kindle and my G tablet, my phone, which is an Android phone, my Windows PC, which is right here in the studio with me, and through my Linux laptop that I use at work, so it has a client for Linux, uh, just anywhere, literally anywhere, phone, tablets, anywhere. Okay, I like that. So the S3 service, doesn't have a similar doohickey that allows you to mount it as a drive until TNT Drive. TNT Drive is free, 100% free, and allows you, once you download it, to set it up and mount your Amazon S3 bucket as a Windows Drive, your bucket. Anyway, these terms, so technical. <laughs> Unlike many other Amazon S3 clients, TNT Drive offers incredible simplicity of accessing your Amazon S3 buckets and files. Yes. So it's very useful. So go forth and fill your bucket. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's talk about a phenomenon. The reason I'm laughing is... When I was doing the audio netcast many years ago, I had one of the listeners sent in an MP3 that had me saying phenomenon to the tune of Manumanum. Matter of fact, why don't I just play it right now just for fun? <laughs> See? Isn't that cool? Phenomenon. I love you guys. Phenomenon. You guys come up with cool stuff. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. Okay. Phenomenon. See, it's, it's fun to share stuff like that, but you, it's harder to do when it's when it's audio. Back from the old days. The old days, back when we just did an audio netcast, and we didn't have the video. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's a yeah. I'm really not that old. Out loud? No, but, you know, they <laughs> look before it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, <clears throat> focus, focus. The thing is, Internet Blackout Day was January the 18th, just a few days ago. And it was to protest SOPA and PIPA, <laughs> which are fun to say but no fun in and of themselves because they're evil. Yes, it is the government's evil attempt to restrict our freedoms. And I'm all about freedoms, freedom of the internet, freedom of speech, freedom of freedom. So, I'm a champion of freedom. Yes. Anyway, the point is, I put up a blackout on the drbill.cc website, which you can still see as a post, that says Internet Blackout Day, January 18th, 2012. Tell Congress, please don't censor the web. Reject SOPA and PIPA. Anyway, these bills would censor the internet and slow economic growth in the US. Click here for more information. And when you clicked, it would take you to a page that explained the whole issue and offered you a, an opportunity to send 
electronic messages to your Congress critters and tell them, what's up with this? Apparently a lot of you did because Google was blacked out with a little logo blackout and Wikipedia was completely blacked out and there were just there was 7,000 plus sites all over the internet that joined in this protest and it worked well kind of at least Sopa and Pipa still funny to say um though not funny in their intent they were tabled for a while at least. Now they'll probably sneak back because the government is essentially evil and they'll try to come back and bonk us in the noggin when we're not listening like paying attention you know like like the Geek Software of the Week drum roll does me. So constant vigilance that's what we need from all you freedom loving folk out there like me. So pay attention. Anyway the point is Yay for all the people who protested like I did and actually caused a good thing to happen, which was tabling those bills at least temporarily. Okay, now speaking of the Kindle uh, Fire that I have here in my hand that I got right before Christmas, uh, it was kind of a Christmas present to myself. <laughs> you know, I mean, that way you always get what you want for Christmas because you just buy it yourself. <laughs> but it was, it was actually... See, my birthday is November 30th, and that's pretty close to Christmas, and I had been given birthday money, which is kind of nice, actually. You know, I'm old enough these days that it's actually kind of fun just to get money so I can go buy the geek toys I want. <laughs> so I put some of my money with the money that I got as a gift, and I got my Kindle Fire, which I really like a lot. I'm saying I love it. Okay. So, Kindles... Kindle Fires, specifically, are sold $5 for, $5 less than it costs to make them. And as I've mentioned before, that can be a problem. But I also mentioned before that that probably won't be a problem because by the time you buy your first book for $7.99, dude, they're already making some money. $2.99 money, that is. So... So anyway, uh, they have a report here that said, yes, that is true. They are actually very profitable. As a matter of fact, uh, it says basically that in the course of three years, each Kindle Fire sold could earn Amazon $136 of people buying books and magazine subscriptions and all kinds of other things and accessories. I mean, I have my Kindle Fire uh, case which also acts as a stand and does other fun things and protects it. And I have screen cover sheets and, and stuff and extra chargers so I can charge it in a car and all kinds of accessories. They can make money on the accessories too. So they're making money, they're doing all right, which I'm actually quite in favor of because as they make money, they'll offer more and more, you know, options and accessories and fun things. And they just upgraded the software. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I think so. Anyway. Uh, oh, yes. I want to tell you a very important thing, and that is Mosey Pro for business. Mosey Pro is your opportunity to back up your system without you even having to think about it. Now, there's an old saying among us system administrators that says... You're only as good as your last backup. It's almost a mantra. Yes. Oh. Um, anyway, the point is, you really it's really true. You really are only as good as your last backup. If you don't back up the data and you lose that data, dude, it's bad. I mean, really bad. And in your case, you have photos, you have videos, you have data of all kinds on your machine, your system, that you need to back up. And Mosey Pro has an awesome offer. If you use this special code right here, PODCAST15, and you go to their website, mosey.com slash pro, just like it says, you go there, you enter that code, you will get 15% off Mosey Pro. It's an awesome, awesome deal. So you need to take advantage of that. I'm serious, really. You don't know how important backups are until you've lost data. Wow. 
Okay, next item. This, you know, I say here, read the title above to the tune of American Pie by John McClane. The day the film died. They were singing bye-bye Kodak, I'm sorry to see you go. Yeah, I make it up as I go along. Anyway, I, I kind of like the song American Pie and I really liked Kodak film, but they are going away. Uh, they are filing for Chapter 11 reorganization. Uh, but here's what I said. I'll just read what I wrote here in the article because I can't say it better than I said it already. Okay. It's a sad day. I was my high school's newspaper and yearbook photographer. I shot sporting events, pushed my film speed to ASA 4000, not 400, 4000 by using unorthodox film developer practices. <laughs> yes, I've always been a little bit of a risk taker. Anyway, so I could take nighttime action shots and generally loved Kodak film. Although my favorite color slide film was Fuji. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right. <laughs> I even ended up with a BFA in painting, printmaking, and photography from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, affectionately called UNCG. Anyway, film is going the way of the buggy whip. So I shed a tear of reminiscence over Kodak's demise. Yes. So anyway, another reason to feel old. <laughs> And, you know, there's all kinds of things that are conspiring to make me feel old. But, you know, it's particularly when I do my old man voice. You like my old man voice? Yes, back, back in the day, I can remember shooting film with film. You know, when it wasn't digital. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let me remind you of another sponsor. I don't want to forget that. And that is... Our awesome sponsor, Citrix Systems, Go To Meeting. Now listen, Go To Meeting has improved tremendously. Go To Meeting now has HD faces. You like the 16 by 9 aspect ratio here? HD! You can watch this very netcast on your Roku box through your HD TV and see it in full glorious HD. It's the wave of the future, I'm telling you. But if you will go to gotomeeting.com, okay, gotomeeting.com, you can get a 30-day trial absolutely free, 30 days free, of go to meeting with HD Faces. It's an awesome way to attend meetings because you don't have to just get in the car and go somewhere or on a plane or walk or <sighs> just do a whole lot of things you don't want to do in the first place. No, you can sit at your own desk, you can click a mouse, and boom, there you are, through your HD webcam, talking to other people with HD webcams, and sharing data and information and screens. Awesome stuff! And this offer, dude, 30 days free? I mean, you can't get better than that. So go to gotomeeting.com. Go to gotomeeting.com. It will be good, I'm telling you. Okay. Whoa! Another Geek Software of the Week? Yes, because last week there was no Geek Software of the Week. As a matter of fact, we called it the No Geek Software of the Week. Actually, the CES, Post CES No Geek Software of the Week edition. I'll get it right. Anyway, the point is that we had No Geek Software of the Week, and I'm sorry. So I had included two, two for the price of one this week. Geek Software of the Week this week, uh, or second one I should say, because we already had TNT Drive. This is Flash Boot. Flash Boot. Now, Flash Boot is a little different than a lot of our Geek Software of the Weeks in that it is not free. It is fairly inexpensive for what it does, but it does some amazing things. It allows you to convert uh, a CD, a floppy, uh, you know, all kinds of boot profiles to a USB stick and be able to use the USB stick to boot from. This is particularly handy for me at work because when I, I need to update the BIOS on servers, I can boot off the USB stick that I've created with Flash Boot and then update the BIOS. Once that's done, reboot the system and we're good to go. So this is a real handy tool. I use it all the time. I had the version one version 
paid for that many years ago. Now version 2 has come out, actually it's been out a little while, and I finally got around to buying that just last week. And it reminded me what a cool piece of software this is. Let me give you some of the features here. Convert Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7 installation to uh, CD, DVD disk to bootable, bootable, bootable USB disks to install Windows on netbooks or other computers that don't have CD, DVD drives. That's handy. Create a USB disk to reset password for any user of Windows XP Vista or Windows 7. Extract Windows XP Recovery Console from Windows XP Installation Disk to bootable USB disk. Convert BART PE bootable CD to bootable USB disk. Convert ISO Linux, Sys Linux, Grub for DOS, and DOS bootable CDs, DVDs, floppy disks to bootable USB disk and duplicate USB disk all with this piece of software. And it costs me in the vicinity of 40 bucks. It depends on the exchange rate because it is overseas and the exchange rate changes. But dude, it's really, really handy software. Okay? So check it out. Awesome. All right. The last thing I want to talk about as we close for the week is my own website, drbill.cc, D R B I L L.cc for computer curmudgeon, as I told you previously. And that is this. I'll read part of the article here I wrote. It says, Yes, I am trumpeting some of the new features of my own website. My dad always said, He that tooteth not his own horn, his horn remaineth untooted. And yes, he was as odd as I am. Indeed. Anyway, here's the rundown of the new stuff on the old website. First of all, we have a new HTML5 WebM video in the upper right-hand corner, top of the column, uh, with the latest, that is the last produced netcast. So like this one, as soon as I finish producing it, putting it in the can, as they say, it will go up in that corner and you'll be able to watch it right there in the corner of the page. Now, right below that, there's a little link you can click and it says click here. And you can click there and go to the actual drbill.tv site. I'll put that URL up here. The drbill.tv site has not only the latest video, but you can also click a button to enlarge it to full screen. Uh, from that site, you can watch all the previous episodes, all of them, off of that site. Uh, tons of cool stuff there on the drbill.tv site. So there's a link here to there. Got it? Okay. Uh, second thing, we've added the Sociable plugin for WordPress to allow you to easily share our post to the interwebs. Uh, share and enjoy, as they said in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Share and enjoy. So share stuff. You know, Twitter it and Facebook it and Google Plus it and do whatever. Just share it throughout the universe. Yes. All right, number three. Under the aforementioned HTML5 WebM screen, we have shortcuts and URLs to subscribing for the show so you never miss an episode. I just talked about that earlier, so never mind. And number four, for our European friends, we have added 7Load to the list of social video sharing sites for the show. 7Load is actually pretty cool, and a lot of people are watching there. Since I started posting, I posted maybe three or four episodes. Dude, <laughs> I mean, people are watching right there, probably even more than YouTube. So I'm impressed. So keep it up, you guys over in Europe. Yes, guten tag and all that. <laughs> anyway, and number five, subscribe to the Dr. Bill newsletter link. It's right there in the column on the right. You have to scroll down a little, but you'll find it. And I got to confess, it's not new. It's been there a while. But come on, folks, you haven't been subscribing. You need to subscribe. Go and enter your email address and hit the little subscribe button and then reply to the email that it sends to confirm it because we want to be sure that it's really you. You know what I'm saying? Confirm that and you'll get our weekly newsletter, which kind of is a recap of all the stuff that we talk about on the Dr. Bill blog. So it's a service to you. Yes. So there you go. That's the Dr. Bill show for this week. Trust you enjoyed it. And remember, until next time, the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.